Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Savannah Jago, one's author of The Gwythinian, and today I'm going to be talking about media kits. So I'm coming at you guys today from my car because I still don't have an office and this is literally the only time that I can make a video and I really want to make this video as soon as I can for you guys because I had some people asking for it. Um, so this is some important information, especially if I have a book coming out soon. So I just wanted to go ahead and get this information about author media kits or press kits to you as soon as I could. So um, I'm going to go over the details of them and why you need them, and I'm also going to show a few pictures of parts of mine just to give you some examples. So first off, why do you need one? Well, if you've just published your book and maybe you're being published through a small traditional press or maybe you're self-publishing, um, you may not have a publicist already hired by your publisher on hand doing things for you. And even if you do, um, a lot of times you still need to do more things yourself as well. So what if someone contacts you and wants to feature your book on a podcast or in their blog or even like on like local news or something? You know, they're going to ask for further information and you don't want to be scrambling around looking for that and then not getting it to them on time or doing a shoddy job of putting something together really fast just so that you can get it to them on time. You don't want to be stressed about that and you don't want to look unprofessional that way and potentially miss an opportunity to, you know, get yourself and your book out there. You really want to take advantage of every opportunity that you can and having a media kit or a press kit ready to go is definitely really helpful. So I found out about this. Um, I had already written my book and set a date, I think, and didn't even know about these. So hopefully you're hearing about this a little sooner in the process, but if not, it's never too late. Um, it's, you know, you could go ahead and start one right now and be ready for the next opportunity that comes knocking. So you want to start with the most relevant information first, which is all about you. So this is gonna be your bio, first of all, your name, and, you know, if you're using a pin name, you don't need to include your real name at all. Just, you know, have your pin name out there. Or if you're just using your real name, have that out there exactly as your author name is. For mine, um, my name appears as Savannah J. Goins. Since my title on my book is Savannah J. Goins, that is how it also appears on my media kit. Not Savannah Goins, not Savannah Joe Goins, just Savannah J. Goins. And you want to do the same thing. Be consistent and don't be confusing. Um, after your... Uh, author name you're then gonna need to put your bio and it's good to have a few different lengths of bios so you want to have one that is tweetable you know the right size for a tweet so go ahead and set one at around 280 words or even a little bit less so that they um, so that someone who's gonna tweet it has room to type in a sentence about you know we're so excited to announce this person and here's the bio so you might want to go for a little bit under the 280 characters but have something that is tweet sized and then have your bigger sized blog or have your bigger size little bio blurb that is going to go on the back of the book cover and then you also want to have um, a longer one with a little bit more detail um, and a little bit more, you know, some other hinting at some other things people could talk about and ask questions about to get an interview going if they um, haven't had time to look you up more or if they haven't been able to find very much information about you to, you know, to know about what sets you apart. And we'll go into more of that in a second. But you want to have like those three different lengths of bios. Then you also need to have all of your social media listed. The, only your social media that has to do with your writing life, though. If you only use Instagram and Twitter for writing life and your Facebook is your personal account that you don't want, you know, strangers trying to follow, leave out your Facebook. It's recommended that you have, you know, it's recommended to have one of all the social medias, but you can only handle so much and just leave out the ones that are not active and impressive that you just don't, haven't really been able to put the time into. Um, I have my Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and website all listed. If you have an active Tumblr account, use that. Um, anything that you talk about writing on or give writing advice on also your youtube you definitely if you're a youtuber you want to definitely put your youtube account or you know anything that has to do with your writing life that is a social media thing you want to add that in and you, and you want to go ahead and embed a link into that as well so that it's really easy for someone to just click on it and go right to it and not to not have to copy and paste it if possible you want to just make everything as easy as possible because people are busy and sometimes people are lazy and you just want to make it as easy as possible to get to all the information that's relevant. So you also want to have your email address in this section. And after that is going to come your 
book section. Okay, so I only have one book out right now. So the media kit that I'm going to show you is the media kit for the Glythinian. And I've got a couple of pictures of that in here as well. Also with your bio section, you're going to want to have a few pictures of yourself. Um, if you have a couple of different headshots, it's recommended to use, you know, a few different ones so that if people, you know, will have room to put in different ones within their blog post or they can choose their favorite one if they can only choose one. And I'm sure you've already heard other places you really need to get professional photography done for this and not just have a selfie from your phone because it is, you can tell a difference and you just need to look professional and put your very best foot forward in this. This is definitely a place that you want to have your professional um, author headshot in. Okay. Even if you only have one, it's best to have a few, but even if you only have one, you have to have a professional one so that people will take you seriously and you can really use this opportunity to move forward and not lose it or not be able to maximize the benefit from it because you, you know, you don't look professional. Okay. So the next thing you're going to want to have is information about your book. So you're going to need product information, which is going to be the title, the author, the publisher, the date of publication, also the date that pre-orders start, whether that started yet or not, you, I'm sure you have pre-orders because you should, and you definitely want to list the date that those start, and if there's a giveaway associated with that that's still going on, include that information as well and a link. You're also going to need to have the available formats, if it's in hardcover, paperback, whatever, you can list the release dates for those various different ones if you want to, if you have them, if not, the main release date of you know, whatever format is coming out first is fine. If it exists in an audiobook format, you want to list you want to list that. You also then want to have the ISBNs for each format that is available. And then you want to start on the description. So you're going to have the genre listed and the subgenre if you have one. And then you want to have a tweetable sized um, book blurb for this as well. And then your actual book size, no. And then your actual back cover blurb sized book blurb. And I don't include any kind of extended blurb for this. I just have the two. Um, but you can also include the first chapter of the book or an excerpt of the most interesting part or the epigraph or some, some little bit of it like that to try to get people's interest. And, you know, make them get really excited about it. Because if someone who's, prom who's supposed to be promoting you can actually feel excited about your book it's going to show and it's going to help you out a lot. So you definitely want to try to excite them with a couple of good excerpts. The next thing after all of that, the next thing is you want to talk about where it's going to be available. So if it's going to be available in Barnes and Noble, that's fantastic. You want to list that. If it's going to be, you know, just available online, list all the places it'll be available online for ordering the physical version or for the um, ebook version, just the digital version. Um, you also want to list if you're going to have any local availability. I have relationships with a lot of really awesome local bookstores that I really love. I'm good friends with their owners, and my book is in all those places. So I also have the names of those places, links to their websites, and their addresses all listed in my media kit as well. Okay, and then the last thing that you want to have are some sample press questions. I already kind of mentioned this in the extended I already kind of mentioned this in the part about the extended bio for you, but you just want to mention some things here that will help someone who's supposed to be interviewing you do a good job of it. So if if someone is interviewing multiple people a day, it's going to maybe kind of hard to brush up on who everybody is and keep it all straight. So if you can put in some interesting things here that set you apart and make you an extra awesome author or, you know, whatever it is that makes you a little bit different, a little bit special, a little bit, you know, extra interesting, out of the box, whatever that is, you want to add some of those things here um, to encourage good interview questions. So something that people might not know about me if they haven't looked very hard is that I'm a registered vet tech and my non-writing life is spent with animals. And um, a lot of it's, I've spent a lot of that time with exotic animals, you know, from axolotls to tigers. And that's a pretty cool thing that not every other author has. So that's something that I have mentioned in my media kit so that we can talk about that and how that relates to my writing. You do want to make sure that these interesting facts relate back to your writing and that they're not just things that you want to talk about to talk about yourself because we all love to talk about ourselves but this is all focused on your writing career so if you love to go hiking and while you're hiking you 
write poems or get inspiration, great. But if you go hiking to get away from writing, I mean, it, it still counts as something that you do, like just to take a break. Um, but just if you don't really need to have more topics, just be, be aware of how many topics you're listing. And if you really need more and only list the ones that are most important, because you don't want to be giving them too many different things to be looking at. You want to just list, you know, the most important, like three or five things. So I created this as a Word document and exported it as a PDF, and whenever I need to update it, I just delete the PDF, update the Word document, and export it as another PDF. I always send it as a PDF and not as a Word document because it's a little bit more professional to do it that way, and um, I, it's good to have it saved to your Google Docs or you know some easy way to send it out into the world in case someone emails you and you're like, oh, I'm not going to be home for three more days. I may not have access to my laptop. It's good to have it on your phone so that you can just email that out to somebody immediately if the opportunity arises. So I hope that you have found this video helpful. If you have, please give me a big thumbs up to support my channel. Let me know if you have any questions. Please ask me in the comments or feel free to shoot me an email. It's listed down below. If you found this useful and would like to see some of my other writing and publishing and writer life tips, please um, hit the subscribe button. And if you, I post new videos on Mondays, and if you would like to be notified every time that happens, you can hit the bell icon for the notification. And um, until next Monday, I hope you guys have fun making words happen, and I will see you then. Bye.